We'll take you through the Cambridge AS Level Accounting paper from March 2017, question 3. It's a question that is based on non-current assets. So it's looking at depreciation, revaluations, and also the disposal of non-current assets. Um, some parts of it are relatively simple, but there are bits that are quite complex because your plant and machinery is going to be depreciated at 20% using the reducing balance method, and this is going to be done on a month-by-month -month basis. If you found this question really tough, this is probably where you got stuck. Right, let's just start by looking at what's required. The first question, A, asks for the total depreciation charge for buildings for the year ended 31st of March. Now, um, you can see that you had land and buildings given at cost of 252,000 and accumulated depreciation so far on the buildings of 21,000. Now, because it's depreciated on cost, we actually don't really need to worry about that 21,000 other than to be aware that we have owned those buildings for a period of time. In addition, you are told here for piece number one, land was revalued to 202500 It had originally cost 182000 Now, the difference between these two values is going to be your revaluation amount. Um, so, although we don't need that to calculate depreciation, you are going to want to factor it in when you are doing um, number C, where you have to do the statement of financial position. So, maybe you could go straight to number C now, which is what I would actually suggest you do, um, and make a note here that your cost of land and buildings is now going to be 272500 which is worked out as the cost that you were given plus the revaluation of that. However, when you're looking at your depreciation, we just want to know land and buildings. So this 252,000, um, but we have to take into account that part of that is land, and we are only going to depreciate the buildings. We know that the land originally cost 182,000, so therefore the difference must be the buildings. So if you take 252 minus that 182,000, you will get a 70,000 value of the buildings, and you can then work this out by saying times 2%, and that is how you will get an amount of $1,400 for depreciation for the buildings. Um, this means that when you are now going to number C again and showing your land and buildings, you're going to take that amount there of 22,400 is in fact the 21,000 that was given at the beginning plus the 1,400 that you've just worked out from number A over here. Um, and that gives you the 22,400. Now, although it's not required to do number C at the same time as A, I don't know if you can see that while you're thinking about these numbers, it certainly does make sense to pop them in over here at the same time. Right, you've now done everything you need to with the land and buildings. We can go and look at the machinery and um, at the plant and machinery. We know that we had plant and machinery at cost of 123000 at the beginning of the year and a total accumulated depreciation of 49000 Now, because plant and machinery is generally a little bit more complex than the straightforward, more straightforward land and buildings, I always like to do rough T accounts. So you can see over here I've created rough T accounts. I haven't even bothered to balance them because all I'm using them for is to illustrate for myself what is actually happening in these general ledger accounts. And you can see that I've shown a balance brought down for plant and machinery at the beginning of 123,000, and my accumulated depreciation I'm showing on the credit side is 49,000. So I've now used both of those numbers, and I don't need to look at them again. We've already used number one. If we look at number two, you can see we are told a machine was sold on the 30th of November 2015. As soon as you are given a date, you need to work out how long you've had that item before you sold it, um, because we already know that depreciation is on a month-to-month -month basis, um, assuming that you've read the whole question before you started, um, which is what you should always do. So given that it's on a month-to-month -month basis, you need to work out from the 1st of April, count the whole of April, 
May, June, July, August, September, October, November, and you do need to use the whole of November up to the 30th, and then hopefully you can see that you have eight months that you have held this machine. So make a note for yourself somewhere that you've had it for eight months. Now, before you even are able to sell it, you are actually going to need to work out some depreciation on that sold item um, and then times it by 8 over 12. So that's why I've got this 8 over 12 written over here. We are then told it had a net book value at the beginning of the period of 46,350, which is immediately what we can use to calculate the depreciation. We take the carrying value at the beginning of the period times the 20%, which is the rate we're given, times 8 over 12. And then we can see that the depreciation on the sold item for the current year before it's sold is 6,180. This is an amount that is very um, easy to forget about and to leave out. But you need to remember that where you're calculating depreciation on a month-to-month -month basis, if you have actually had it for eight months, you need to depreciate it for those eight months before you can then sell it. Because that depreciation does need to form part of your operating expenses in your statement of income. So that's why I've got that over there. Now, at the same time, we are told that it had an original cost of 76200 So immediately, we need to realize that your plant and machinery account is going to decrease by that 76200 And at the same time, you want to reduce, it, reduce the accumulated depreciation by the difference between the cost and the net book value. So this over here is giving me my accumulated depreciation at the beginning of the period. But then I need to also remember that I've put in depreciation for the current year, and so I also need to take it out. And that's why I have written here plus 6180. So the total amount of the plant and machinery accumulated depreciation that you'll take out needs to actually be 36030. And you will need to use that just now when we're doing our statement of financial position. We are then further told that a machine was purchased on the 1st of December at a cost of 62850 So immediately you can show that over here on the debit side of your plant and machinery account as a new item. Obviously over here you wouldn't say new, um, you'd either say bank or creditors, depending on how you bought it. I've just popped in new just so that I know what it is. And remember these are my rough tea accounts, they're not for anybody other than myself. So I can actually write whatever I want. Now we need to keep in mind that when we calculate our depreciation at the end of the year, we are going to need to calculate depreciation both on the old assets as well as the new assets. Now the depreciation on the new asset is actually quite straightforward um, because all you need to do is take the cost of the new item times 20% and then since you got it on the 1st of December, you can count December, January, February, March to take you up to the 1st of April and so that's for four months. That's how you will get that 4190. That's quite a nice easy one to do. However, you now also need to calculate the depreciation at the year end and this amount of 5530 is probably also an amount that might have foxed you a little bit. What you need to do is keep in mind that you need to calculate your depreciation as 20% on the carrying value. So we know it's 20%, so we write 20% here, and we know it's got to be carrying value, in other words, cost minus the accumulated depreciation. So don't worry about this alternate one that I've got there. Let's just focus on this for the moment. What you do is you look at your cost account. Obviously, this is the new item. You ignore that. You're not looking at this. You're only looking at the old plant and machinery. In other words, what was left after Oh, what was left over after you sold this asset here. So you take 123 minus that 76200 to find out what the cost of the old item was, and it happens to be 46800 And then you look at your accumulated depreciation account, and you use everything in this account up until the end of the year and see what is left over in that account. Um, obviously, there's no ACTEP on the new item yet, which is why we don't have to ignore anything. We can take all of this into account. So it's the beginning balance plus the depreciation on the sold item minus the total accumulated depreciation 
on that sold item. And that gives us a total accumulated depreciation of 19150. If you then use your cost of the old items and your accumulated depreciation of the old items um, together using that carrying value times 20%, you will get an amount for depreciation of 5530. Your mark scheme, however, shows a slightly different way of calculating it. And obviously, you are welcome to use whichever method makes sense to you. I've shown you this one because it's a tried and trusty one that you can use any time that you have created these rough T accounts because you just look at the numbers in here and you can use them. But the other way of doing it is saying we know what the book value was at the beginning. Um, if you look over here, you can see that the cost was 123000 The ACDEP was 49000 Therefore, my book value at the beginning of the year must have been 74000 and then from that you subtract the book value of the sold item that will then also give you the same amount which is the book value of the old uh, plant and machinery that you've still got left over times it by 20 percent to get the same amount um, for your depreciation on your um, plant and machinery you need to factor in all three of these amounts and so that's why you'll see over here there are actually three lines to this calculation you can see them the new machine that was purchased a 4190 um, that we've included over here when we did our uh, depreciation at the end of the year the machine that was sold of 6180 that in fact would have been recorded on the date of sale which is why I always like to do that one first and then your other machines or your old machinery that was left over of 5530 you then total all three of those figures together and that gives you your total plant and machinery depreciation once you've got that it's then relatively simple to go and complete this extract from the statement of financial position we've already done the land and buildings for plant and machinery, all you do is you take this tier account that you've got and you just work out the new balance. And if you add and subtract, you'll actually find that the balance brought down is this amount of 109650 that is shown over here as the cost. Um, in addition, you'll do exactly the same thing for your accumulated depreciation. Um, and you would work out that your balance brought down at the end there is 28870. If you have a look at the workings that are given, you can see that it's exactly what we've done. That 123,000 plus 62850 minus the 76200, it's directly taken from that T account. The depreciation on plant of machinery, similarly, although the numbers look slightly different, they're exactly the same. They're just expressed in a slightly different way. Your 49,000 is the amount you started with. And then that 15,900 is quite simply all of this depreciation together that in actual fact you worked out over here. So that 15,900 is coming directly from your answer from B. Then in addition, you needed to subtract the 6180 um, that you took out as well as the 29850, which was basically this calculation over here working out the ACDEP on the sold item and that's how you will get your new ACDEP balance. You can then total those together, it's very straightforward. To get your net book value all you need to do obviously is say cost minus ACDEP um, and that will give you your net book value and you do it all the way across and then this last one here can actually be a double check for yourself. Um, yeah, and then D is just a straightforward theory question so you shouldn't have any problems there. I do hope this has helped you to understand a rather complex non-current asset question a little bit more clearly.